Diana knows I'm going to ask her every single time. <laughs> Diana, hey. how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Great. What's new? Uh, I'm very happy. I love, no, uh, because it's Friday. Uh, tonight I watch, see a movies and drink Ooh. one beer. What? Uh, ah, yes. That sounds fantastic. Oh, yes. I am That's, very happy. Uh, I am very happy for you. Come on. Because of so that. Por eso, because of that. Because of that. Because I'm happy because, because of, that. of that. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Um, I give you yeah. my applause because, yeah, sometimes we need just to relax and have fun with the people we love. Yes. Uh, with the things that we fun. love. Uh, good day of the news in the morning, I dropped a box. Uh, se me quebró una cubeta de huevos. ¿Cómo se dice eso? Of <laughs> you dropped a carton of eggs. Okay. I know. I know who's going to feel. Who's going to feel hurt? I know. Uh, <laughs> is bad. Very bad. It is. It is. It is terrible. I know. The, right, Liana? Liana the, doesn't approve. Liana está the, muy enojada. Liana doesn't approve <laughs> porque los Estados Unidos de huevos están expensive. Really very expensive. expensive. Very expensive? Very. Yeah. How much? Depends on the state, but like eight, nine dollars for 12 eggs. Nine dollars for 10 eggs. Nine. Nueve por cinco. ¿Cuánto nueve por cinco? ¿Quién se acuerda de las tablas? 45 mil pesos por una docena de huevos, muchachos. ¿Qué? ¿Qué? Ya, yeah. y usted quebró 45 mil, pero tiene un solo guarapaz. Clean. Is <laughs> <Okay>. back. <laughs> pow, pow. Okay, good to hear from you. And here we have Angie. Angie, thank you very much for that message. Angie sent me a beautiful <laughs> message that helps me feel energized. She says, I, I, I make her feel that she wants to do this and uh, that she needs it and she wants to do it with us. So thank you very much. I'm really glad to hear oh, Angie that you're motivated. Thank you, teacher. You are encouraging me every day. All right. Thank you very much. And we have also Ana America, who's also in the States. We have Ana America, Angie, and Liana, who are in the States. Edith is in Mexico. Alex is in Bello. Beautiful. Beautiful Antioquia. And Juan Carlos is in Palmira. Valle, right? Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. We're going to be reading tonight. Okay. I have, a, I have an idea. Do you want to continue reading uh, Cam Cold Lake or you want to switch over to the book that I have suggested today, which is My Morning Ritual? What do you prefer? Let's, let's raise your hand for Camp Cold Lake, which is really good because it's a novel for kids, yeah, but a novel nonetheless. And so we learn about, a lot about tone, uh, and rhetoric. Rhetoric is a very interesting word. I like it. Juan Carlos votes for Camp Cold Lake. I think that's what he means. Who else votes for Camp Cold Lake? We're going to return to it anyway, but I want to maybe one day read something, another day read something different, but we can continue with Camp Cold Lake. Uh, we have another vote for Camp Cold Lake, I think, Alex. Yeah? We have two votes for Camp Cold Lake. The other people say... The new book, maybe? What do you think? Angie, what do you say? <laughs> what do you say, Angie? Camp Cold Lake or my morning routine? My morning routine. Gotcha. And uh, Anna America. Yeah, maybe the morning routine, we can do something new. I think something so. different. A different yeah. tone, a different content. How about you, Diana? Um, I don't know. 
No problem. Okay. Undecided. No. Yes. <laughs> Undec no we'll mark you up. We'll put you down as undecided. Edith, what do you think? Camp Coat Lake or my morning routine? It is probably busy. Juan Carlos, did you vote for Camp Coat Lake? Is that right? Okay, Juan Carlos says Camp Coat Lake. Oh, look at the baby. And Alex, I'm what do you vote for? Camp Coat Lake, Lake, right? What did you say, Edith? I, I can hear the question, sorry. Oh yeah, if you want to go back to reading what we were reading yesterday, which is Camp Coat Lake, a novel for teenagers, or if you want to read something more adult, mature, and serious, my morning routine. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's like more, yeah, it, it may be like for teenagers. Uh, Camp Coat Lake, the book we were reading yesterday is for teenagers, yeah. Yeah, I think that. You think that? Okay. So we got, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm, running the tally correctly or what? Which one won? I'm lost. Liana, Liana. Oh, no. oh Liana, is gonna, Liana is gonna be the one that decides, no, don't, Liana. Don't make me do that. I don't make me decide, decisions. yeah. Sometimes people need to decide. <laughs> you decide, um, what do you want? I, I guess we can try the new book. The new book, okay, we're going with the new book. Liana's fault. Just kidding. I know that's why he made a decision. <laughs> you knew it was gonna happen. Don't, yeah, don't walking be mad right at into me. it. <laughs> gonna be mad at you. Don't be silly. Okay, remember that this book is in direct connection uh, to the vignette of this week, which I have also proposed that maybe Liana also does it, but Spanish version. What do you think? Spanish version. So Liana would need to tell us in Spanish about her morning routine and how that builds her up and all that stuff. Oh, that funny, you know, like um, artsy fartsy stuff. And that would get that would be good practice for Liana, and we could give her feedback on her Spanish, which is, I think, the whole idea with this course, and which is what makes this course um, evidently different from the rest and and successful. Okay, so maybe Liana can also benefit from giving us her, her, her version of what she thinks is a morning routine. In her case, her morning routine. That's it. I'm, I'm just, now I'm talking out of my, you know, weather. And let's, um, let's continue with the book. The book is in classroom, by the way. I shared the book right here on uh, WhatsApp, but it's in the classroom already as well. Just as the other books are. It's a little slow. Give me just a second. Okay, we're there. This is intermediate right there. You go to classwork, and this is where you find it, by the way, for the new people. Padlet. It is like our library of sorts, okay? So when you go to classroom, there's classwork, the second tab to the right. If it's on your phone, it's on the bottom. And on your computer, on your laptop, it's going to be on the top of the screen at the top of the screen. And this is the second tab, classwork and Padlet. Open Padlet and that's our library, okay? We got articles and we got books. Apparently there are no books. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Let me see what's going on here, huh? Okay, there. So we got my morning routine, goosebumps and still like an artist. Okay, the three books that we've read so far. Oh, that we've been dabbling into. And there we go, my morning routine. Am I sharing my screen, am I? Or not? Okay, good, my morning routine. And let's do this. How do I do this? Oh, okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I need to. Uh, do you yeah, have the sure. link to join the Google Classroom or like a password or whatever? Yes, it is right here, let me show you. Uh, <clears throat> Right here. This. All right, let me take a picture. Or I can even send you the invite link. Oh, okay. That yeah, works too. As well, both. 
I guess. Okay. So. There. It's in the WhatsApp group. Or just go to Google Classroom. I would suggest you download the app and then join a class, LVXMXJU. All right. So let me just open the book from my computer. Okay. Wait a second. Mindful thoughts. Don't have it here. I need to download it. One second. New computer. Yeah. My morning routine and when you have it here you download where do we where do i download is this download here maybe copy edit duplicate copy link download attachment okay Bob, yes i'm afraid that uh, for this book there can be done zero performance i can hardly <laughs> understand what you're saying juanca can you repeat that again please I, I told you that maybe get the friend, microphone close to your mouth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me know. Okay, and here's my morning routine, which you can find again on Padlet, or I also shared the uh, the file, the PDF file to WhatsApp. Okay, I think it's a very interesting um, book, which is which compiles interviews with people that are successful. And I don't know about you, but I think that checking out what successful people do can give us ideas. And the funny thing is that many successful people go through the same routine or ritual. I mean, like I think that I heard from Chuck one day, I think it was Chuck that told me, one day Chuck told me, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm, 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 I'm making my bed. And he's like, oh, great. That's what all successful people do. And I'm, oh, that moment I felt successful. I knew I was successful at that moment. <laughs> all right, so morning routine. How successful people start every day inspired. And I think, I do believe, I don't believe in breakfast. By the way, <laughs> I do uh, intermittent fa fasting because I'm 47, so I need to do it because I'm not going to be beautiful forever. So I need to start taking better care of myself. I'm not the same, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Metabolic machine that I used to be. So I need to be careful, yeah? So I'm skipping one meal breakfast. I wait, I wait until lunch. That's what I do. But I do believe that what you do in the morning creates something or, or has the potential to create something enormous in your life, I think. I don't know. I, I believe. And the morning is any time. You know, for some people, it's three in the morning. For others, four, five, six. It depends on how much morning you want in your life. Yeah, so my morning routine... Yay, I, I like this is this illustration, beautiful. Benjamin Spall, by the way, so you check him out. I think that is the least we can do. You know, like uh, learn about the authors. Benjamin Spall, who's this guy? And Michael Xander, I'm gonna just let you do that on your own. Okay, and I already shared the some of the interesting quotes here in the introduction. Okay. All right, chapter one. Getting up. Okay, and here we go with the phrasal verbs. <laughs> Getting up. How to move from your bed to your morning. Important. Very important. I use the snooze button. Sorry. I abuse my snooze button. My snooze button. I always go like five more minutes, ten more minutes. Did you um turn the page? Because we just see the cover. You're seeing or the okay, cover. Sorry. Yeah. I apologize. That's why you were <laughs> okay. looking so bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We need to imagine everything now. Okay, just one second. Yeah. It was just to see if you were paying attention, okay? <laughs> not there. No, no, I'm not sharing the right one. One second. Uh, hold on. Now. Yeah? Okay, getting up. Getting up. How to move from your bed to your morning. Okay? 
How long does it take you? I bet this guy is sleeping with the dogs. Who needs, who needs an alarm clock when you have a dog? Oh, certainly, most certainly. This guy won't let me sleep in on weekends. He goes like, but he's, he's very polite. He's not like scratching. He just puts his paw on me and he won't let go. I know that's very difficult for dogs, but he does it. And he stays there put until I get up. So yeah. Sometimes, Who needs an alarm clock when you have a dog? Well, sometimes we need to, 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 to get up, to, to wake up the, <laughs> the pets. <laughs> It's, you do it's not mine not <laughs> occasionally exactly. maybe but not mine mine is very active he's ready Tio, every time is la lazy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> tears lazy no dante is not lazy at all caroline paul by you know who liana our beautiful liana hey, liana by the way i love that top very oh, nice and colorful you. beautiful looking thank fantastic you. tonight are you going out maybe <laughs> Um, no, I have some homework I have to do tonight because I have a lot to do Ooh, this weekend. Homework, Friday homework? Yeah. Okay. Enjoy. All right. Caroline Paul by Liana. Okay. Caroline Paul, author of Lost Cat, former firefighter. Mm. When you're a creature of habit and you're in no rush to change. Mm. What is your morning routine? I set an alarm from anywhere between 6 and 6.30 a.m. depending on when I get to sleep. I need sleep but I need to wake up early more or my day feels shot. Next, I make coffee, feed the milling animals, grab two protein bars and sit down to read. Not the newspaper though. I do often check the headlines, but a real honest to good book or honest to God book. If one's not, uh, if one's not around, I will settle for the New Yorker. As a sacrifice, or oh, sorry, it's a sacred time for me because reading has always been a part of my life and it's hard to find time for it. As a writer, it's also a vital part of my work. At this time, my partner, Wendy, is still asleep. The doggy has gone back to bed. One cow has gone outside and there are only two other animals to contend with. One, a cat, uh, and she curls up on my lap and the other, my own rambling mind. And we both stay there until the house stirs and comes to life. I have to say that the transition from the world being mine to the moment it seems to splinter and everyone wakes up, phones ringing or phones ring, emails come in, the dog reappears. It's always jarring or is always jarring. All right. That first question is answered there. What is your morning routine? And there's several interesting um, <clears throat> asides here in the language department. Um, the first thing I notice, and I want everybody to notice stuff. This is just my lead to you. Just pick it up and move on. I'm going to tell you what attracted my attention because I'm a language teacher. When you're talking about between six and six 30, she says anywhere that attracted my attention. That's very cool because that means that the metaphor for time in English for people that speak English, has a lot to do with the position of things. Maybe they see the progression of the hours as a line that you go along from one point to another point. So there's some sort of um, distance between and in, in, in a way that you just like sort of move in one direction. So definitely it has some kind of spatial, as in espacial, spatial notion attached to it, the concept of time that doesn't exist really in Spanish. So the contending metaphors, and when I talk about metaphors, I'm talking about our perception of abstract concepts is different from Spanish to English. Nunca diríamos como, si yo pongo mi alarma en, en algún lugar entre, ¿cierto? Like anywhere. ¿Sí? O en algún sitio entre. Como que para nosotros el tiempo no es un sitio, no es un lugar. El esquema de pensamiento en otro no es así para el tiempo. Definitely, time is one of those concepts that are different from, uh, for, for people that speak English or think in English and for people that think in Spanish. Making, uh, I mean, like, what point am I making here? The point that I'm making is that sometimes understanding the general frame of a, of a very simple concept like time 
in its abstract form, the way that language that we want to learn speaks about it and thinks about it helps us be more inclusive of it, of the idea, and it makes it easier for us to be able to understand that language. It might be too abstract, I think. Yo creo que es demasiado abstracto, pero la idea acá en español es que el, el, el constructo de lo que llamamos lenguaje parte de la observación. Esto es un libro que vamos a leer en algún momento porque es mandatorio, es obligatorio para este curso y es metáforas de las cuales nosotros vivimos. El lenguaje es construido totalmente metafóricamente. Es muy interesante. The metaphor is pretty much like the, 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 um, the birth the birthplace of language. Y la metáfora es una forma de uno entender un concepto abstracto respaldado por la realidad tangible. ¿Sí? El tiempo es abstracto. ¿Sí? Y los americanos, por ejemplo, en este caso, lo entienden como distancias, desplazamientos sobre una línea. Y, por ejemplo, para nosotros es muy difícil entender la idea de at this point como un momento. At this point, I don't know what to do. At this point, what do you mean at this point? Oh, at this moment. Ah, porque nosotros entendemos momento, pero no como en este punto, como tiempo. Pero ellos lo entienden como puntos que trazan una línea y que tienen distancia y un recorrido. So definitely the idea, the metaphoric origin of time tiene que ver con una sobreposición de esa idea del tiempo que es imaginaria sobre el tangible de lo que es la distancia. Y, y como que el desplazamiento me parece algo muy interesante y quizás lo que trato de hacer con esta con este comentario que hago es que ustedes como que abran la mente y tengan apetito por esto porque realmente si uno entiende la metáfora de lo que da origen al lenguaje en inglés en diferentes conceptos entiende uno mucho mejor e incluso comprende de dónde vienen los famosos idioms o idiomatic expressions para eso les voy a recomendar un video para después de clase. Les voy a dejar un videito para que vean qué es el amor en inglés. What love truly is in English. And I need that. I need to show that to my wife. It's Friday. It's a joke. It's a joke. Ok, más tarde les muestro la metáfora de lo que es el amor en inglés. Bacanísimo. Y ahí van a decir ustedes, con razón. No wonder. Yes. I mean, like they, they have it very clear, by the way, Liana. Respect. You understand love because you speak English. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll shut up now. ¿Qué piensan ustedes? ¿Qué les llamó la atención, etc.? Uh, um, you know something? I thought when she said, I set an alarm for, for anywhere. I thought, oh, I mean, she can't wait up anywhere. <laughs> I thought exactly. That. I mean, I mean maybe point. she's a girl, like, you know, she doesn't know where she's going to sleep. <laughs> well, she's Sorry. gonna crash. She can't. I know. I mean, she can't. I mean, she can't get up. I mean, anywhere. Like, okay. I, I don't know. I mean, everybody's yeah, free to do whatever they put want. The but, put the bottle yeah. down. Put the bottle down. You're sleeping there everywhere. <laughs> good. Good point, Anna. Thank you. Anybody else? That was cute. <laughs> that was very cute. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, I just, I just, uh, I have a point of view. Your comment uh, seems a resignation, guy. <laughs> and the love, <laughs> the love, the love uh, uh, advice. Yeah. Look at this. Honest to God is an adjective. What do you think that is? It's a Christian book, maybe. No? Liana, what is that, honest to God? Help us out. Uh, like, I would say real, genuine. Authentic. Authentic, yeah. Right? Like, um, something that built you up. Not just, you know, like, all fun and games, but something serious and... You know, those self-help books sometimes are really good. Why not? And this is one of them. This is one of them. In you know, like how to understand success as a routine of mourning. But, but it's different uh, to a, a, a fiction novel, for example. Quite different. I guess so, yeah. Could be. 
if it's just fun, but not to go into, don't get me started on the classics because those guys were deep. You know, like talking Victor Hugo, right? Tolstoy, deep books. Honest to God too. All right, so, but Goosebumps is not honest to God. <laughs> it's just fun. All right. Dante, Dante is not the, the God, no? Dante, the other, the author, the, the Divina Comedia. Oh yeah, that, that one is honest to God, I, see, I think. Settle for something. Does anybody understand that expression? To settle for something? ¿Cómo se dice eso en español, Liana? To settle for something. It's like compromise, but I'm... I was ah, gonna, close. I'm close, trying. but no cigar. Close, but no cigar. Uh, settle well, for is... In con, I don't, I don't conformarse. Know what is conformarse, okay. Sí, como que, ah, no tengo opciones, pero me tocó conformarme. Like, okay, I, I'll settle for this. No options. Si no tiene opciones... Settle for algo. Ya pues porque te tocó. Te tocó. So te conformas. The New Yorker. Yeah, the New Yorker is good. Hmm. Anything else, people? You know, like, activate your minds. ¿Qué vieron acá? ¿Qué quieren volver a, a, a tratar, a mirar más de cerca? Milling animals. Is the... Oh, yes. Always those adjectives attached to to objects or animals, very interesting because it, it sheds light into the, the, I guess, the relationship we have to things and, and animals and people. Like the word milling could be several things that you could understand as several things. But when you attach it to animals, what is that? Milling animals. Milling animals, what is that? Domestic animals. But it's more... I'm not sure. But it's more like, like a movement style, a type of movement, milling. ¿Qué hacen los animales en la mañana? Si se mueven. Dan vueltas por acá, miran por la ventana, vuelven y miran por acá. Al menos acá, como aquí nos levantamos temprano a despachar a Juanita y a Jacob, empieza a dar vueltas. ¿Sí? Va por allí, viene por acá, huele, busca, viene. ¿Sí? También están busy. Milling animals. And I like that so in correlation con esto. Rambling mind. I like that. ¿Qué creen ustedes que es rambling mind? It's like a wonder mind. Yeah, very good. It's a, it's a mind that wanders. Yeah, that's right. Very good. And then we have a verb. Okay. This verb. Which, by the way, there are words that have a literally, a literal a, a literary meaning and a figurative meaning. And I think that the figurative meaning is much richer and it explodes in uses in comparison to the just act that represents the, the real thing. Like stir is to do this, for example, with a drink, like your coffee, you add a little bit of sugar and then you stir it. Or maybe Liana's martinis, she stirs them. Yeah. And then that's what happens to a house in this case. It starts to, you know, like it says, stirs and comes alive. And I want to point out something that is redundant. This is redundancy, but is very common in idiomatic expression. In spontaneous conversation, people use a lot of uh, redundancy. Stirs and comes alive, the same thing. So sometimes for your vocabulary practice, if you see something like this and that, sometimes you might just wonder, okay, maybe they mean the same. Okay, so now I know what stirs mean. To come alive, to activate. Si la casa se activa, se pone ya busy. Si, okay. And that's what it is. Anybody else? All right, let's continue. Next question. 
by Liana. <laughs> How long have you stuck with this routine? What has changed? I've started my day with this same meal and coffee, Pete's French roast, one large cup, so, so strong you could probably eat it with a spoon for almost 30 years. Gosh, that's sort of embarrassing. Okay, that part before we go to the next page. Very interesting picture in my mind of coffee, coffee so strong you could probably eat it with a spoon. Wow. Isn't that kind of fascinating? No. O sea, esta exageración, this hyperbole is so rich in meaning. I like that, you know, like, and by the way, Liana, Paisas, you know, people from Medellin, we're so exaggerated. Everything is like this. Somos super exagerados. Es algo que enriquece mucho el lenguaje. One inch cup, okay, for almost 30 years. Almost 30 years. Yeah, some people never change. Some people never change. And says, gosh, what is that, Liana? Can you can you kind of give us a short um a short uh, lecture on why you say gosh and not the other word? Uh so you could say gosh, the other word, yes. Uh Johan said is god but it's kind of like a i guess a, a softer way to say it like wow that's sort of embarrassing yeah it is because you don't use his uh what is it his, his name, in vain. name yeah. in vain exactly no uses su, no, su santo nombre en vano y hay gente que son demasiado pegados a la norma sí y bueno tú no quieres herir susceptibilidades cuando estás en una casa por ejemplo de familia en Estados Unidos it, it happened to me it happened to me me pasó a mí. Yo fui a visitar amigos en Mississippi, que es un lugar que uno pensaría que es muy de tradición, pues cuando estás con familias, when you're in family meal, family time. En Mississippi no hay almuerzo. Lunch doesn't exist in Mississippi. In fact, lunch is called dinner. In the South, in, el, in Mississippi, lunch is dinner. Pero nadie cocina, nadie hace nada, simplemente los sobrados del otro día, you know, like, Uh, last night's leftovers, los sobrados, los calientas y ya eso es tu almuerzo. Pero el momento de reunión, básicamente como Jesús lo hacía, you know, in the fashion of Jesus, of, you know, the Jesus, people would sit down to eat and talk about their days. And anything goes at this moment, you know, I'm there sitting and people fart because it's Mississippi. La gente se tira pedos en la, en la mesa porque te están comiendo porque es Mississippi. Yeah, it's true. And people joke and, you know, like there's, you know, like um, mention about the bathroom, you know, businesses, business in the bathroom, you know, like shit and all this. And mother sitting at the table has no problem. But then I say, God damn it. Oh, shit. Yo creí que esa señora le iba a dar un ataque al corazón. What? Le dio algo because I said, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> o sea, puedes hablar de cualquier barra basada, cosa horrible, the F word, you, you know, just drop F bombs, left and right, and you can S word and N word and all the, the D word, what is the D word, and etc. <laughs> But don't use oh, the never, name God's of name the Lord. Name. No usen el nombre de el Santo Señor. Ya, yeah. entonces eso, por eso existen palabras como gosh, golly, geez, geez, wheeze, en lugar de nombrar a God y a Jesus. Darn, What were you doing in Mississippi? Gosh. Oh, I have friends in Mississippi that like family. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's kind of a random place to go. It's weird, right? Because Mississippi, <laughs> yeah. Mississippi, what? who goes to Mississippi? You know? It's very rural. So, There's no business for outsiders to visit unless you have friends. That was my case. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's very interesting for you culturally to understand that sometimes profanity, uh, cussing can be of different kinds. Y que uno normalmente piensa que las vulgaridades que uno ve en la televisión o en mi canal de TikTok 
So, oh, yeah, but maybe sometimes people don't know how strong to some people the word God can sound. Y es lo que no saben. Y nunca preguntan por qué en lugar de decir God dicen gosh. Como cuando en español decimos hijo de mi chica, hijo de madre, etcétera, etcétera, en lugar de decir la palabra en sí. ¿Sí? So would it be um, like offensive to some people if you were to say like, ay Dios mío, like por ejemplo en español, like God, the word God. Oh, in Spanish? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I don't think in Spanish. What do you think, guys? Ustedes que todos que hablan español, si alguien dice, oh Dios mío, o oh, ay Dios mío. Es, es que horrible. No, no, no. Aquí no. Es muy el mal. Es really polite. Es polite. Es polite. Sí, es muy educado. Es muy educado, ok. Sí, porque la gente dice, ay, juez. Eh, esa. Ay, Dios, ay, ay, bendito sea el Señor. Dicen los viejitos acá. Liana, los viejitos aquí dicen, bendito sea el Señor. Por los lados de God Cristo. Almighty. We have a lot of words. I mean, we 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 are mad at someone. Believe me, we we know how to express. We don't, it. We don't need to use God or Jesus. No, no, no. We use a lot. <laughs> exactly, but that's interesting because that's different between the different across the cultures. You know, it's interesting. Yes, exactly. So once again, be careful. God, Jesus, you would think no. You know, like what did I say? What did I say? You would be completely teacher flabbergasted. Yeah. Uh, for example, my, my daughter, I don't know why, she doesn't say like, oh my gosh. She said, she says always like, oh my, oh my, oh my. Oh, oh my. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Yeah, that's very, that's people very... here say that too, like especially yeah. older people. Oh my, viejitos. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. My. She's, she's, oh my. You were like, what? She's too polite. <laughs> Tell her that we commend her on her politeness. She's too polite. You're polite, yeah, she's so polite. She's too polite for a regular society. All right, so I good job, guys. That, I have heard that some people say like, um, or holy cow, or holy cow, yeah, or or there is. Uh, I was remember here. Um, I forgot the other one. <laughs> Holy cow, holy macaroni, holy, holy moly. Yeah, there are many. No, they said holy like, guacamole. Holy guacamole. <laughs> That's good for Edith. And he's going, yeah. There you go with the racism. <laughs> no, here, here we say, Santo Niño de Tocha, you all the people say different sense. It's like the, the greatest sense is Jesus or maybe God. But, uh, but when is, that, like, is that offensive? No, but when you say, oh, my goodness. No, Dios dice, ay, Santo Niño de Atocha y la Virgen de la Candelaria. O sea, there are like a type of ayer for saints. Interesting. Yeah. Well, by the way, we never maldecimos. Aquí en Colombia nadie dice mal. mal. El único que escuché yo maldecir, which is to curse, you know, like to curse the sanctity of life or whatever, was my grandfather. My grandfather used to maldecir todo el tiempo. Él decía, maldita sea, when he was angry, like, God damn it, something like that. But we nobody says here, like, maldición or, no, nobody says that. I don't know. It's crazy. Or if you do, interesting. Maldición. Era clase de inglés. Yeah. We don't say that. You know, just also trying to make it interesting for our friend Liana. But yeah, it's interesting. It's just an interesting thing, cultures, how we express our our emotions. Okay. All right. Excellent. And uh, let's move on. Liana. Uh, okay. I like to get up early no matter what, but I, I may not set the alarm in indifference to Wendy or yeah. Okay. If I'm writing on a Saturday or Sunday though, then I set the alarm. Like it's a weekday. Uh, what happens? Okay. Uh, what happens if you're traveling? When we travel, my bag is always overweight because it's got maybe two pants and two shirts and then 30 protein bars, five books, and a bag of coffee. Wendy will say, Caroline, it's New York City. They have everything. But nope, I'm not going to leave my morning routine to chance. Wendy is much more loosey-goosey <laughs> with her days. She used to pester me to lighten the load, but it's been nine years and she doesn't bother me anymore. I want to mention anyone. that I love this 
<laughs> book because it's so um, spontaneous in its in its uh, style of speech. So we learn a lot of interesting vocabulary in the form of idioms and collocations and expressions, etc. And what did you notice? <clears throat> Honestly, I got lost. I don't know where did she start uh, reading. I mean, I was in the last page, but after that, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm still looking. <laughs> I don't know where. Yeah, we're reading page. this new page. Are you seeing my? Are you seeing my screen? Yeah, I like, the first thing, I like to get up early, no matter yeah, what. Yes, so I can see. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, so we're on this page, and there are a couple of interesting words and expressions that I'm itching to talk about, but I talk too much. So I want you to please take over for me. What do you want to know more about? I want to say, since you don't talk, that, uh, that uh, Liana's uh, stumbled a little on this one. And it's because, you know, like you wouldn't expect that word to be used there maybe, but it's interesting. Can anyone guess what that means? And guess it, not from the word itself because it's not gonna make sense, guess it in its context. What does it mean? I like to get up early no matter what, but I may not set the alarm in deference to Wendy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting, right? Just smell the aroma of that new word. <laughs> what do you think? Anybody? Give me a wild guess. Inventen. ¿Qué creen que es eso? In deference to. A ver. Quiero una in comparison with someone else, maybe? Oh, in what? Comparation. Ay, close. Close, but not cigar. No, not right now. No cigar, no. No te ganaste el, el cigarro. Casi. Pensé que estaba otra cosa. ¿Cómo? A diferencia de... No. No, like I told you, don't look at the word. Look at the context. Mm -hmm. Would it be like, uh, for, like out of respect for Wendy? Out of respect. Por respeto. Pero obviamente que no mira ahí difference, you no cree que es difference. Diferente, ¿cierto? No. Difference is respect. In, re, in deference to, out of respect for that person. Se, se deducía del, del, del contexto. Yo me, yo me levanto siempre temprano sin importar qué. Pero no me gusta siempre poner la alarma por respecto a Wendy. O sea que Wendy no se levanta con la alarma. Quizás Wendy se levanta más tarde. Actually, in Spanish, it's almost the same word. Really? Defer Deferencia. Deferencia. Yeah, it, it is yeah. the same. But, but would you we, use it? We didn't Can you use, use it? No. Uh, okay, so that's the thing. Maybe you know. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, because I was going to point out, it exists, but sometimes in our oh. vocabulary, you have to understand meaning, use or form, and pronunciation. Right, the three, the three things that you need to consider. Yeah. In Liana, vocabulary. Liana, is it is that um, usual in in English? Is to is to to. Uh, in, in deference common. Common common? To say? this in, in deference to um no like i mean that's kind of why i like had to take a second look because i was like what the hell is that like i've never used that before yeah so it's the same yeah we don't use that i mean maybe some people but i've i've almost never heard anybody don't say start using it now because i know that <laughs> no. there are people that are assholes not you uh, not you but there are people yeah, that are assholes. oh I'm going to use that so people think I'm smart. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Keep it light and simple, I, I, okay? I think, I think in, 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 the, in the context, in Spanish, you can, you can say difference or diferencia. It's something sarcastic, maybe. Or when you, or when you Could be, yeah, to, exactly. When you try to, to, to fight with another. So you or, may, know, or maybe it's something... It's necessary to know that because maybe in early books or history books or or law books, old books, is is good to know that. For example, 
I it, it was it was uh, difficult to me understand what was what supper was because supper oh, is okay. dinner in old vocabulary or some regions. So it it's good to know that, but we are not going to use that a lot. Or if you're in Mississippi, you must. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Since you don't ask questions or bring up, you know, ideas. Fab, I what don't... does Lucy Goosey mean? Exactly. I know you want to explain it. Lucy Goosey. Lucy Goosey. Es muy demasiado. Eh, o sea, ¿qué le digo yo? Como, como, como se dice? Como, you know, like, okay, like my, 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 like my son. No, <clears throat> no. Que son demasiado eh, flexibles. Like you don't Como relajados. Cuadrados. No, no, tan bueno, de, de manera de manera figurativa eso, relajados. Pero por ejemplo, mi hijo, mi hijo cuando era cuando tenía cinco años, podía coger el dedo, este dedo, y se lo ponía hasta acá. That's Lucy Goosey. <laughs> o sea, demasiado flexible. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but like I said before. We have the literary, the, the literal, what is it? Literary, <clears throat> the textual meaning, and then we have the figurative meaning. El, el significado o uso textual o literario y el significado o uso eh, figurativo, que es mucho más abierto. And Lucy Goosey in this case would be, como ustedes lo dijeron, muy, muy flexible, muy relajado, Sí, que no se preocupa por nada, Lucy Goosey, with her days. And I love that one. And that's why I highlight it because I want you to remember it. Don't forget it, Lucy Goosey. Anybody here feels Lucy Goosey? Who's Lucy Goosey? ¿Quién es relajado de aquí? ¿O quién tiene cara de relajado? You. I, yeah, oh, I was going to say that, but I, I'm not. Yeah, you, you got me wrong. You see the teacher, which is my character. Once I finish my lesson, <laughs> ask my my I ask my children. Ay, porque está en clase. Ay, está feliz. He's happy because he's with students. And if he closes the computer, <laughs> you change your mask. Absolutely. Your face yes. mask. Yeah. I'm not so loosey goosey, really. The real I am loosey goosey for the lesson. The real Fabian is without. Please the stand up. Leader. Yeah, no, it's a character. We all play characters. Some people tell me in on TikTok, don't be so cussy, don't be so... I say, it's a character. I'm saying a character. Some people buy it, it's not for you, okay? I'm the teacher right now, okay? But I'm not the teacher all the time. You know, I can be a little bit of an asshole, a little bit only, <laughs> okay? All right, let's continue. A little bit, a little bit just a little bit. Let's continue. Uh, James Freeman. Meet James Freeman. But since this is a guy, I want maybe Alex. You want to read, Alex? Sander? Sure. What? Uh, what happened if you traveling? Do you want to read? Sure. All right. There you go. James Freeman by Alex Sander. <clears throat> James Freeman, founder of Blue Bottle Coffee. When your old espresso machine gets your, you up in the morning and helps you make your most important decisions. Um, what is your what is your morning routine? I get up at I get up at six a.m. most days. Unless the babies get me up before, I have an alarm clock with no sound bar, <clears throat> so I can be template, tem tempted, tempted, T tempted to hit to hit it. I have I have an old espresso machine, a late nineteen uh, seventies, uh, La San Marco Leva, that is set on timer so when i when i wake up 
the machine has been warming warm up and is at optimal temperature for making coffee. Wow. That's, that is sophistication, isn't it? Wow. Anybody has anything to point out here? <clears throat> I think I need a beer too, right? Who's getting beer tonight? Diana is. I think I need a beer. I have beer. All right, read and tell me what catches your eye. Algo que les llame la atención. What catches your eye? ¿Qué les llama la atención? When he said, I can't be tempted to hit it. Hit it is like stop it or like repeat it. Yeah, to stop it. Like, you know, he doesn't have the snooze bar, so he can't hit it to turn off the alarm. Yeah, so but activate. Uh, wait, bro. Oh, it's like it's like it's like pressing a button, but in a more you know, in a in a fun way to say it, just hit it. You know, like sometimes you say, Hey guy, hit the lights, prende la luz, hit the lights. All right. No le no le vas a pegar realmente. Ese sería el significado. Eh, textual o literario, sino que es figurativamente, pues prenderlas. Sí, pero una forma como bacana de decirlo: hey, hit the lights. Uh, hit me. <laughs> Don't hit me. All right, so yeah, hit the, the snooze. I do that a lot. Yo lo pongo a las 5 y el snooze ya está programado en mi celular. Entonces yo ni siquiera me despierto y hago así y ya, y pones snooze otra vez a los 7 minutos y a los 7 minutos y mi esposa empieza. How many times? Like that. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy being married. I love this news. Do you love this news, Liana? I do, but I usually only hit it once. And by the way, uh, Stella Artois. Oh, okay. I like it. Yeah. Stella, can you see it? Stella Artois. Mm. <laughs> I already yeah. drunk one Stella today. <laughs> really? Well, <laughs> cheers to you. Cheers. You see that I was having trouble with my voice? It's because it's Friday and my throat knows it. <laughs> 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 All right, let's continue. Algo más que les haya llamado la atención. Bueno, yo que he trabajado for Starbucks. Ojo que la gente cree que expreso es con X y que significa rápido. No. Okay. What is the meaning of espresso, espresso in, Spanish, in, in Italian? It's not quick, although it's quick. But what is espresso? It's like uh, concentrated coffee. A presión. Strong, yeah. A presión, espresso. Ahora, pregunta de cultura general. ¿Qué tiene más cafeína? ¿El café de greca o el espresso? El café de greca es drip coffee, by the way. Por eso. No, no. El café de greca, el café de drip, 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 ese es mucho más concentrado en los niveles de cafeína. Lo que pasa es que como el espresso barre tan rápido, arranca todos los aceites, which is the aromatics. Los aceites del café son los que empacan el aroma y el sabor del café. Entonces, por eso crees que el espresso es muy fuerte. Ay, no, esto no me va a dejar dormir. Not going to be able to sleep with this thing. Creen que está demasiado cargado de cafeína. Y no, es los aceites que le dan ese sabor fuerte, concentrado, pero tiene menos cafeína que el drip, 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 porque el, 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 la, la cantidad de cafeína es en función a el tiempo de exposición con el café del agua. Sí, obviamente que el drip, 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 drip toma más tiempo. Is the same for the home coffee, <laughs> like the machine coffee? My yeah. Is the same? Also for the funeral home coffee, it's the same. Yeah. Funeral <laughs> <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. It cooks forever. So, usted se lo toma una sola ya para noche así. Yeah. With bits of metal also. Interesting. Uh, all right, so it's time to leave. Oh, this is one hour is not enough, definitely. Let me read the product recommendations. Let me see what this is. Interested in taking a deep dive into our interviewees' favorite coffee makers, teapots, and juicers? 
not to mention their favorite books, podcasts, and apps. Head over to our frequently updated product recommendations page at, what is this? Is this keep a page or something? Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. That's it. We'll never That's know. It. We'll never know now. Four days a week, I do a boot camp in San Francisco Golden Gate Park. It's exhausting and arduous and clears my mind like nothing else I've ever done. The teacher gives the impression of never wanting to be anywhere else doing anything else, which is quite rare in my experience. I think that's me, right? It's like, you're like, don't you need to go out, Fabian? Yeah, I have so much fun with you. I think this is the perfect closing line. And I want to thank you all for being here on a Friday afternoon slash evening. Thank you again to Liana. Thank you, Liana, for being here. It's it's a, it's a, it's um it's quite a compliment to have you here. Okay, compliment with an I. And it's Thank um you. it's a pleasure and a privilege to have someone who is entirely from another culture so we can contaminate you with our stuff. I love that. <laughs> okay. ¿Qué tienen para decirles a los compañeros o a Liana algo lindo para un viernes en la tarde nada? <laughs> Nothing, right? Enjoy your Friday and happy weekend. Happy Get some weekend. Beers. Get some beers. Get some beers. You deserve it, guys. Yeah. Have a Even long at weekend. home. Yeah. Was it? What? What is it? Have a long weekend. Oh, I hope long weekend. <laughs> yeah, no, todavía yeah. no. Cuando... Yes. Yes. The United States. The the next Monday is President's Day, so it's, ah. it's a holiday. It's on usually, yeah. yeah, usually the kids have off Friday and Monday, but usually yeah. the workers only Monday. Oh, cool. So you have a long yeah. weekend. Anna, mm -hmm. Geraldine, oh. Angela, <laughs> <laughs> right. is, I don't like this. No. no and now I'm going to drink to forget that you have it and I don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of weekends. Oh, we have a lot, of, a lot of long weekends. We do. We celebrate everything. And we don't celebrate President's Day, birthday. Oh, no. We don't. Hey, by the way, President's birthday, is it the birthday of Joe Biden? No. No, so it's no. for um, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I was going to say, like, <laughs> what? And how what? the good presidents we used to have. How the good presidents used to have, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shh, we don't talk politics here. Shh. <laughs> I don't want to be hated. I had a friend, and one day I made a comment about Trump, and I had no friend anymore. What? Yeah, like, people what? are very serious about that. Here. Oh, absolutely. I don't know what's going I, on. I, I personally think they're all equally bad, but. <laughs> I believe so. It's a machine. <laughs> it's a machine that just produces the same stuff, you know, different models. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you again tomorrow. Peace. Happy, and guys. thank you very much thank for the, the, the shifting of the schedule. Thank you very much. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Good How nice. Means I can drink more beer. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Bye, guys. Thank you.